Hello, I thought I would hop on here and do a little craft with me video. I hear lots of crafters saying that they want to make cards. And so today I'm using the um, KS Craft uh, flower card die set that just recently came out. And I die cut a whole bunch of pieces and kind of put a few things together. But as I was making it, I thought, oh, let me turn on the camera and we'll do a little craft along. So um, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. So I'll link the die in the description box below. I am part of the design team, so the die was sent to me for free, and um, I am going to use it to make a little shaker card today. Okay, so the first thing you need is a um, card base here that is an A2 size card, which is um, four and a quarter by five and a half. And so I have just um, used one of these from like Hobby Lobby. You can also get these at the Dollar General. They're pre-cut and scored and they come with the envelopes. Or of course you can make your own. You just score down the side and create a little card. Okay. So I've got my card base and then I have die cut my um, panel here out of some pattern paper. I'm using the Chasing Dreams collection. And then I also just cut a little strip of paper and added it to the bottom down here. Um, just to give a little bit of texture and a place for my potted uh, flower to sit. And so I used um, this die right here to cut that out. And then this die is the background for that. And I used this pink paper to cut that out. And I've got, um, you know, the holes have cut out. They're just sort of hanging in there. So I'm just going to use my paper piercer to kind of um, punch those through. If you have one of those rolly tools that gets, um, you know, all these extra little pieces out, um, those work as well, but sometimes they just sort of hang in there. So I'm just going to punch all of those out so that this is ready to go. Okay. Uh, then I have used the Hello Sentiment die, this one here, and I cut it out of some teal paper and I layered it on this little frame that came with the collection. So I just glued it on top of that little frame and I'm gonna use that in a second. Um, I have cut out my little pot in yellow here. So I use this die to cut that little pot out. And then I also use this to cut my acetate piece that's gonna be part of the shaker. And then I used this die to cut my yellow pot and then I used this flower piece to cut here and I paper pieced it on the back um, with some pattern paper. You can turn all of this into a shaker if you want to. I decided just to turn this actual potted part and I should have filmed myself doing all of this, but honestly, I didn't think about making the video until just now. So I apologize. Um, but basically I just cut this out of the pa pattern papers and layered them on top. And then I cut this one out of white and glued it on top. Okay. And uh, I'm not going to use the bloom or the friend on this particular card, but it does come with those pieces. And then I did also use this die to cut out my foam and I'm using the five mm foam from Hobby Lobby. And then this piece uh, is what came out of the center of that, but we're going to use that in just a second. Okay. So that's all the pieces that I have die cut. So let's start putting this thing together, shall we? Okay, I've punched all those little holes out of the side of this, and so I'm gonna use my Barely Arts glue, and I'm gonna put some glue on the back of this thing. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around the edges here. I'm not gonna worry about all of these edges here with the dots, they'll be fine. Um, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue there like that, and then I'm gonna glue this down in the center of my card base. I'm gonna try to sort of line it up, and this is meant so that you have a little white border around the sides of your card, which I actually really like. When I make cards, I always leave a white border like this around the side. Some people go all the way flush to the edge, but I don't know, something about it. I just like the extra layer that that gives. Okay, so I've got that glued down now on my card base. Okay, then I am going to put this on here and I think, I think I'm going to pop this up with foam tape. So I'm going to use some foam tape. Um, today I'm using this tape here from the Dollar Tree. Uh, you can get this in the hardware section. And I really like this tape. Uh, it works good. It's super sticky. It's cheap. Um, 
it, you know, it sort of comes in these little pieces or you can just kind of keep it all together, which is what I often do. I just sort of let it stay attached to itself and then I put it on here. I, when I put foam tape on the back of something, I cover the whole thing as much as possible. Um, because if you mail the card, I don't want it getting all bent and rumpled up in the mail or, you know, when I put it in the envelope, you know, I don't know. I just think it looks more professional if you have, you know, a pretty solid layer of foam in the back. So this is too big to fit the holes that I have. So I'm going to just snip it in half and fill in the spaces that need to be filled in. I've got a couple more there. So I'm going to do this. Okay. Then I'm going to take all of the backing pieces off of this. So I've removed all the backing pieces and now I'm going to stick this down and I want this part down here on the bottom because this is going to be sort of acting like my table top. Okay. And I'm going to uh, sort of line this up so that it's in the center of that pink layering piece. And once I get it in the right spot, then I'm going to smooth it down with my fingers. Okay. So we've already got a little bit of dimension going on our card and it's looking cute already. Okay. So now I'm ready to... Um, create my shaker. So I'm going to set this aside for a second and I'm going to um, get my shaker going. So I'm going to get my uh, foam piece that I have die cut and I'm going to use my um, uh, Barely Arts glue and cover the back of this with glue. Okay. So I've got that covered. I'm not going to worry too much if it gets messy because the glue will dry clear. It's not going to be the end of the world. Okay. And then I'm going to layer this up on top of my yellow piece here. You can see I'm already making a big mess because this is what I do. I'm a messy crafter. Okay. So I'm going to layer, line this up so that it's just like this. So you can see it's lined up on the back. Okay. I'm going to try to get that as straight as I can with the foam, you know, as, as much as you can. Okay. And I'm going to let that dry for uh, just a minute or two before I start filling it with sequins. Okay. So I've got my sequins mix created over here and I like to use, I think I've showed this before, but I use these old Velveeta trays. So, you know, when you buy Velveeta cheese for like queso, um, it comes wrapped inside of these white containers. So um, the cheese never actually touches these containers. So instead of throwing these away, I use them to create sequins mixes in or bead mixes in my craft room. So <laughs> you'll often see these in videos. Um, so this is my sequins mix. So I'm just going to use my little spoon here and I'm going to spoon some of this out into my little plant here, my little pot. And I've got some big sequins pieces in here that I'm probably going to pull out because I think it's going to be too big for the shaker. So some of these big yellow flowers, I'm just going to take a few of those out. And I like to fill my shakers up pretty good. Not too much because then it doesn't shake as well, but I don't want it to be skimpy either. Okay, that's probably good. All right, so once all the sequins are flat, then I'm going to take my acetate piece and I'm going to glue that on top of my pot. Okay. So let me zoom in. Let me move this out of the way. Okay. So I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to run it around the edges here. And again, I'm not too worried about keeping it clean because it will dry clear and you won't even really see the glue. Okay. So I've got some glue there and then I'm going to take my acetate and I'm going to glue it on top. Let me clean it off. The acetate has a bunch of fuzz on it. Okay. And you can see I just, well, I'm doing a bang up job on this video today. You guys are getting to see what it's really like in the craft room here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to push this down and again, let this dry for a couple of minutes before I actually start messing with it. Okay. Once that's adhered a little bit, then I'm ready to add this piece on top. So I'm going to, again, put my glue here. You can put it on this or the potted plant, whichever works. And I'm just going to follow the outline. And then um, I'm also going to glue this piece on the back of my flower here. So I want my flower to be the same height 
as my potted plant. And so I'm just going to use the inside of this because it's the same exact height. And I'm going to trim off the sides to fit so that it's not showing when I glue it on back here. And then I'm going to glue this um, to the actual flower part. So I'm going to trim this off just a little bit more. Won't fit like this. I think so. Yep. Okay, and then I'm going to take my flower and I'm going to line it up with my pot there. And then I usually try to put something heavy on top and to let it dry for like 10 minutes. Okay, so you know, sort of walk away from the project, go do something else, and then come back. So I'll set something heavy on top of here so it sort of pushes it all down and lets it dry. Once your shaker is dry, then you're ready to glue it on your cart. So again, I'm just gonna use my Barely Arts glue and I'm gonna flip it over and put glue on the back of my foam and my paper here, and then I'm gonna glue this onto my card. So for my card, I'm gonna glue it over here on the side, about right here. And again, I'm just gonna press it down and then give it a couple minutes for the glue to adhere a little bit before I start messing with it. Okay, then I'm ready to put my little sentiment on here. I'm gonna, um, let's see, is this focusing? Okay, I'm gonna put my little hello down here at the bottom but I want to use um, the same kind of foam that I use for my shaker. So um, I'm gonna have the hello sort of uh, overhang on the shaker a little bit, but I need to put a piece of foam here to um, sort of lift up this part. And I wanna use the same foam that I used for this pot here, okay? So I'm gonna just glue this down onto the back of this uh, piece here. So, Again, I'm just gonna put some glue there and then sort of figure out where I need it to be and let that dry and then I'm gonna put glue on the whole thing so I'm gonna put some glue over here and then some glue right here and then I'm going to line it up where I want it to be on my card and I've got this hanging over just a little bit down there so I'm gonna move that okay and then I'm going to let that dry. Okay, I really like to mix fonts and textures on my projects. So I want to put the word friend here, but I don't want to use, you know, the same cursive uh, friend that comes with it. I think it'll add a little bit more interest if I use something else. So I am going to use these Jen Hatfield stickers that I have. Um, this is from the Avenue collection and there are all these little puffy word phrases in white and black and they do have the friend word. So I'm going to try this out and see how this looks. I'm not sure if I want to use black or white, so I'm going to try both and see what I like better. So if I put this one here maybe or down here, let's see what I should do. Let me think about it. So I could put it down here. The great thing about these stickers is they're not that sticky, so they're very easily, you just peel them right up. So when you put them down for real, you will want to glue them. Or I can put it here, inside this little frame, which I actually think I like better. So let me see if I like that one better or the white. So there's the black, and then here is the white. I think I like white, the white, even though the black stands out better, I think the white just goes better with the collection. So I'm going to glue this down and I could use my Barely Arts glue. It would probably hold it okay, but I like to use the E6000 on the puffy stickers um, because it really holds them. These are sort of made out of plastic and anytime I'm gluing plastic down, usually I use my E6000. Um, because I don't want it coming up later. It bothers me when these puffy stickers come up off of what I have put them on. Um, I love puffy stickers, but I have a real problem with the adhesive that they use to create them. So um, I'm just going to glue that down with the E6000. And then I know it's not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to add a little button to the center of this flower. 
So I've got this jar of buttons here and I'm just going to dig through it and try to find probably like a yellow button to put in the center of my flower there. Okay, I tried the yellow and I decided that it was too matchy-matchy. So I decided to go with the orange. There's a little bit of orange up here in the paper. Um, so I'm going to tie some thread and I like to use this um, DMC Diamond uh, White Iridescent Thread. You get this in the embroidery section. So it's not in the regular um, thread section. It's in the embroidery, um, you know, down the embroidery aisle. And um, I like it because it's really thick and it's got this pretty iridescent look to it and it ties really well on buttons. So that's usually what I use to tie my buttons on. So I'm going to just thread it through there and tie it in two knots on top of my button. And then I'm going to trim off the edges here. And then it will be ready to be hot glued into the center of that flower. So I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on there and glue it down. And then get my glue strings out of the way here. Okay, so that's my card, and I could just leave it at that. It looks cute, um, but I feel like we have too much blank space over here, so I'm actually going to cut a couple of page flags from the pattern paper that match this, and I'm going to add them up here to the corner, probably with just a little staple or something. Okay, so these are my paper scraps here, so I'm going to look through here and sort of pick out some pattern papers that I think would go well with what I already have going. Um, maybe this yellow... Uh, I think that's too tropical. That's too plain. Let's see here. Maybe this pink? Mm, I don't know. Let's see what we got here. Okay, I like this maybe. This I think would add some good contrast. All the papers in this collection are so pretty, but a lot of them are very pastel. And you guys know I'm a bright, <laughs> a bright colored person. I like bright colors. Um, so it's hard for me sometimes. Maybe, maybe this with this blue. Maybe if I just take a little bit of this blue off of here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut this blue stripe, but I only want the blue paper. I'm not going to use the white off of there. So I'm just going to cut this like that. Okay. And then in order to make it a flag, I like to flip it over and I just cut a little bit down the center and then I meet in the middle with each triangle. That's the fastest way. I mean, I have a punch that does this, but it's honestly just easier and faster to do it like that. Okay, yes, I'm liking the blue with the dot there. So I'm going to make a page banner out of this one too. Okay, so I trimmed these down a little bit and I've layered them on top of each other and I just stapled them together with my tiny attacher. And now I'm just going to add some glue to the back and glue them down to my project up here in the corner. Okay. I'm just going to get it lined up up there with that top part of the card and then give it a couple minutes to dry to let the cool the glue dry before I start messing with it. Okay, and then my card is pretty much finished. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is just add a couple of these little rhinestones on there. These are from uh, Want to Scrap. And I like these ones because they're kind of an opal color and they go with like every collection. And so I'm just going to scatter these about and just put a couple. I usually put them like three on there. Um, and I just sort of put them in random places and it just adds a little bit of extra bling on there to the card. Okay, and that is our finished card. So again, I used the flower pot shaker 
uh, card set from KS Craft, and I will uh, link it in the description box below so you can check it out. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, I love to read what you guys have to say. Okay, I will talk to you later. Bye.